polygons, working with the area, angles, and perimeters of polygons. First, to wrap up the angles of polygons, if I have any ingon, that's a polygon that has n sides, the angles will always add up to the number of sides minus 2 times 180. So if I have a triangle with three sides, 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 times 180 is 180. So we've got two shapes here, and we want to know what do the angles add up to on these two shapes. Well, how many sides do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 sides. So n is equal to 7 here. So we just go to the formula, 7 minus 2 times 180 or 5 times 180, which I'll probably need a calculator for. But 5 times 180 is 900. The seven-sided shapes, the angles will add up to 900 degrees. And this works with any shape. This shape over here is almost a circle. It has so many sides. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. n equals 12. This is a 12-sided shape. Same idea, though, 12 minus 2 times 180, or 10 times 180 gives us a total of 1,800 degrees if I add up all the angles of this 12-sided shape. That's kind of nice. Another simple property of polygons is how to find the perimeter. Perimeter is simply the distance around the shape. So all we have to do is go around all the edges, for example, of this trapezoid, and say how much total distance is there. We've got 7.2. The next side is 16.1. The next side is 18. And the next side is 14.8. We don't really care about the height hidden in the middle there. All we care about is the perimeter, adding those sides together, probably on a calculator to make sure I don't make any mistakes with my adding. And we end up with 56.1 is the distance around this trapezoid. Now, more interesting is not the distance around, but the area, or the amount of stuff on the inside of the shape. To find the area or the amount of stuff on the inside, we're often interested in finding the base and the height of the shape and doing something with those measurements. The key here that we need to remember is the base and the height are always perpendicular. Base and height are perpendicular. So let's look at some formulas. You think it's a small world after all? Ooh, the Earth has a surface area of 148. 1,940,000 square miles. I don't know if that's so small after all. Some formulas, good formulas to know. A parallelogram, area is equal to the base times the height. Triangle, area is equal to 1 half of the base times the height. Trapezoid, area is equal to 1 half times the height times the sum of the bases. In a trapezoid, there's two parallel sides. Those are the two bases. And the height is perpendicular to both of them. In fact, we can do any regular polygon as 1 half times p times a. And this is an interesting formula. We'll look at an example in a minute. But p is the perimeter of the polygon. And a is what we call the apothem. It's kind of like the radius. It goes from the center to the edge uh, of the of one of the sides. It's a perpendicular bisector of one of the sides through the center. So let's take a quick look at an example of each of these to make sure we can use these area formulas. This first shape's a triangle. Triangle is 1 half base times height. So we need to decide what's the base and what's the height. Remember, the important thing about the base and the height is that they are perpendicular. So here, my height is 3. And my base is 5. The 6 and the 4 I don't care about because they're not perpendicular. They are not my height. So we really have 1 half times the base, which is 5, times the height, which is 3. And if I do that on my calculator, I get 7.5 square units. The second example. Uh, below it here is a parallelogram. The opposite sides are parallel. And we know the formula for the area of a parallelogram is base times height. 
So we just need to decide what's the base and what's the height. And again, the base and the height have to be perpendicular. Base does not necessarily mean bottom. Here, the base is on top. And the height is perpendicular to it at 6. So base is 12. Height is 6. 12 times 6 is 72 square units for the area of this parallelogram. Remember, base and height are perpendicular. Base does not mean bottom. Sometimes the base is on the left or the right. Or if it's a trapezoid, it could be on both. We just are looking for that perpendicular relationship between the base and the height. All right, this next example is a trapezoid. We've got one set of parallel sides. So the area for trapezoids is 1 half times the height times the sum of the two bases. Remember, the two bases are the two parallel sides. So the parallel sides are 3 and 7. That is base 1 and base 2. And the height is going to be the part that's perpendicular to both of them. And notice the height of 5 is perpendicular. This time, the height goes up and down. Sometimes the height will go left and right. Height means perpendicular to the base, not up and down. Perpendicular to the base. So let's plug in what we know. 1 half times the height, which is 5, times base 1, which is 3, plus base 2, which is 7. To help us with order of operations, I usually do the addition. 1 half times 5 times 10. And when I plug that in my calculator, we get 25 square units. This next shape, it's a regular polygon. We don't really have a formula for it. It's regular because all the sides are the same. What we need to do, though, is figure out the formula for the area. The area is always 1 half times the perimeter times the apothem. Now, the apothem is kind of like the radius. It's the perpendicular bisector that connects the center of the shape. So 5 is definitely my A. But 4 is just this one side on top. We've got another 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 4s around the outside. So the perimeter, adding all 7 4s together, is 28 units. That's what we want to plug into our formula. 1 half times the perimeter of 28 times the apothem of 4. And when we do that, we get 56 square units. Now, with all these formulas, if we know the area and we have to solve for one of the missing pieces, we can do that as well. Everything starts with those same formulas for area. We also played a little bit with angle and perimeter. But the big thing today is area of polygons. So take a look at the homework assignment. Give them a good go and let your instructor know if you have any questions.